In the quiet suburbs where life usually unfolded in serene predictability, the marriage of Lauren Hugo Mayer and Matt Phelps stood as a testament to youthful love kindled from a chance reconnection. Once middle school acquaintances, their paths diverged only to intertwine again years later, when a simple follow on Instagram rekindled the dormant connection. Both at the age of 26, Lauren and Matt discovered in each other not just a partner but a reflection of their own passions and beliefs. This shared affinity for the whimsical worlds of Harry Potter and Star Wars, coupled with a deep-rooted Christian faith, laid the foundation for what seemed like a burgeoning fairy tale romance. As their digital interactions transitioned to ceaseless conversations, their bond deepened, quickly blossoming into a profound emotional connection. Their relationship, embroidered with shared laughter and mutual interests, appeared to be the epitome of a modern love story. Matt's proposal seemed not just a question of marriage, but a confirmation of what everyone around them already perceived, a match seemingly made in heaven. However, the narrative of their perfect union began to unravel at their engagement party. The event, meant to be a celebration of their love, instead foreshadowed the discord that lay ahead. The arrival of Matt's mother, clad in white, an apparent breach of wedding etiquette, served as the first public crack in the idyllic image of their relationship. This act, perceived as a slight against Lauren, was dismissed by Matt, hinting at a deeper estrangement from his family, particularly his mother. The couple's subsequent move to Raleigh, North Carolina, in 2016, marked the beginning of a new chapter. Matt secured employment at an in-home care company, quickly distinguishing himself and earning the title of Employee of the Month. Lauren, equally industrious, balanced multiple jobs alongside her full-time role at a Fortune 500 company. Her entrepreneurial spirit shone through her side ventures, from babysitting to selling candles, driven by a vision of financial independence and success. Their life in Raleigh, while outwardly prosperous, was underpinned by a steadfast commitment to their faith, a cornerstone of their relationship. This dedication was embodied in their weekly tradition of joining Lauren's family for game nights, a ritual that underscored the couple's seeming integration into each other's lives. Yet, beneath the surface of this harmonious exterior, tensions simmered. The fissures in their relationship, initially subtle and easily overlooked, gradually widened, casting a shadow over their marriage. The initial glow of matrimony, often described as the honeymoon phase, quickly dimmed for Lauren and Matt Phelps. Their relationship, once full of shared dreams and laughter, began showing signs of strain. Central to their discord was Matt's increasing discomfort with Lauren's friendships, particularly with a male friend from their church. Matt's suspicions, fueled by past betrayals in his first marriage, cast a shadow of distrust over their bond. Lauren, committed to her marriage, sought to reassure Matt of her fidelity but the seeds of doubt had already been sown. Matt's past experiences with infidelity had left deep scars. He revealed to Lauren that his first marriage had ended in betrayal, with his wife admitting to an affair. This revelation painted a picture of a man grappling with the ghosts of his past, struggling to navigate the complexities of trust and commitment. The couple's once vibrant conversations began to fade, replaced by an unsettling silence that enveloped their home. As Matt's demeanor shifted from contentment to a palpable darkness, his detachment from their shared faith became more pronounced. Lauren, for whom faith was a guiding light, found her husband's growing disinterest in their religious practices not just disheartening but a personal affront. This divergence in their spiritual paths only widened the chasm between them, leaving Lauren longing for a connection that seemed to slip further away with each passing day. Matt's behavior took a troubling turn as his motivation waned, and his days were increasingly consumed by video games rather than the responsibilities of married life. This growing lethargy, coupled with irresponsible spending, placed a significant strain on their finances. Lauren, already stretched thin by multiple jobs, found herself shouldering the burden of their financial stability, a situation that bred resentment and exhaustion. The couple's struggles were not unnoticed by their friends and family, who attempted to intervene. Yet, their efforts seemed futile against Matt's spiraling depression and detachment. The once joyous occasions at Lauren's family home for game nights became tainted by Matt's absence, a move that Lauren and her family perceived as a deliberate act of disrespect, 
further isolating the couple from their support network. In a desperate bid to salvage their crumbling marriage, Lauren agreed to a road trip to Matt's hometown of Bowling Green, Kentucky. She hoped that time away from their routine might rekindle the dwindling spark in their relationship. However, the trip only served to exacerbate the tensions, with Matt's mother's cold demeanor towards Lauren acting as a stark reminder of the underlying issues plaguing their marriage. Upon their return, the couple's dynamic had reached a breaking point. Matt's increasing withdrawal into his own world, marked by secretive journaling and unexplained financial discrepancies, raised alarm bells for Lauren. She confided in her mother and sister, revealing her fears and the toll Matt's behavior was taking on her mental and emotional well-being. The revelation that Matt had potentially been stealing money from their savings was a devastating blow, one that shook the very foundations of their marriage. As summer gave way to the early whispers of autumn in 2017, the marriage of Lauren and Matt Phelps reached its nadir. The once vibrant threads of love and shared dreams that had bound them together were now frayed beyond recognition. The tension that had been simmering beneath the surface of their relationship finally erupted, leading to a night that would shock the community and send ripples through the legal system. On the night of August 31st, Lauren found herself alone and fraught with worry as Matt left their home, ostensibly to assist a former co-worker. This departure, under the shadow of their escalating marital strife, left Lauren in a state of turmoil. Her subsequent texts and calls to Matt, a mixture of anger and desperation, went unanswered, amplifying her sense of isolation and betrayal. In the early hours of September 1st, a 911 call shattered the stillness of the night. Matt Phelps, in a voice laced with confusion and fear, confessed to a dispatcher that he believed he had killed his wife. His claim that a dream had turned into a nightmarish reality, with Lauren lifeless and a bloody knife at the scene, sent emergency services rushing to their home. Upon arrival, law enforcement was met with a scene that belied the horrific nature of the crime. Lauren was found in a fetal position on the bedroom floor, her life extinguished in a brutal and senseless act. The room, a silent witness to the tragedy, was splattered with evidence of the violence that had occurred. The blood-stained walls, carpet, and bedding painted a macabre picture, while the presence of a bloody knife pointed unmistakably to the lethal nature of the altercation. As Matt was taken into custody, the tranquility of their suburban home was replaced by the meticulous activity of crime scene investigators. Their task was to piece together the events that led to Lauren's tragic demise. Every detail, from the positioning of Lauren's body to the distribution of blood spatter, was scrutinized, catalogued, and analyzed. The evidence collected would form the backbone of the prosecution's case, providing a silent yet eloquent testimony to the violence that had unfolded. The investigation extended beyond the physical confines of the crime scene. Digital footprints, in the form of Matt's internet search history and social media activity, offered a glimpse into his mindset leading up to the crime. Searches related to the effects of coricidin cough and cold medicine, which Matt claimed to have taken in excess, hinted at a premeditation that belied his initial claim of a dream-induced act. The immediate aftermath of the crime saw the Raleigh Police Department tasked with the somber duty of informing Lauren's family. The devastating news was delivered with a gravity that matched the heinous nature of the act, leaving her family reeling from the dual blow of loss and betrayal. Lauren's sister, awoken by the heart-wrenching screams of her mother, was confronted with a reality too painful to comprehend the senseless murder of her sister at the hands of the man she had once loved. In the aftermath of the tragic night that claimed Lauren Hugo Mir's life, the focus of the investigation shifted towards understanding the motive behind Matt Phelps's incomprehensible act. As Matt sat in custody, his initial claim of a cough medicine-induced haze during the 911 call became a critical element of the narrative that law enforcement sought to unravel. The investigation delved deeply into Matt's personal life, examining his journals and electronic devices for any indication of his mental state and intentions leading up to the crime. What emerged was a troubling picture of a man who appeared to be battling internal demons, a stark contrast to the image of a loving husband he had portrayed. Entries in his journals and his digital footprint revealed a fascination with dark and violent themes, raising questions about the influence of these interests on his actions. 
One of the most chilling discoveries was Matt's internet search history, which included queries about the effects of mixing coricidin cough medicine with alcohol. This detail suggested a level of premeditation that contradicted his initial claim of a medication-induced blackout. Furthermore, the existence of a secret Instagram account where Matt posted content related to death, the devil, and violent imagery further complicated the narrative of a spontaneous act driven by drug side effects. As the investigation progressed, the toxicology report became a pivotal piece of evidence. Contrary to Matt's claims, the report indicated only a small amount of cold medication in his system, not nearly enough to cause hallucinations or a blackout. This revelation significantly undermined Matt's defense and pointed towards a more deliberate act of violence. The autopsy report on Lauren provided a harrowing account of her final moments. The nature and number of wounds indicated a brutal and sustained attack, with evidence of defensive injuries suggesting that Lauren had fought for her life. The sheer violence of the attack, coupled with the defensive wounds, painted a picture of a personal and intentional act of violence, far removed from the claims of a dream-induced accident. As the pieces of the puzzle began to fit together, the motive for the crime remained complex and multifaceted. The financial strain on the couple, evidenced by their depleted savings and Matt's irresponsible spending, emerged as a potential stressor that may have contributed to the escalation of tensions. Moreover, Matt's betrayal and his previous marriage, revealed through Lauren's conversations with her family, hinted at a pattern of deceit and infidelity that may have eroded the trust in their relationship. The trial of Matt Phelps for the murder of his wife, Lauren Hugelmere, marked the culmination of a tragic saga that had captivated and horrified the community. As the court proceedings unfolded, the prosecution and defense presented their narratives, each aiming to sway the jury's understanding of the events leading to that fateful night. The prosecution's case was built on a foundation of forensic evidence, digital footprints, and the chilling 911 call made by Matt himself. They painted a picture of a premeditated act, highlighting the inconsistencies in Matt's account of the events and his prior internet searches related to the effects of coricidin cough medicine. The toxicology report played a crucial role, undermining Matt's defense by showing that the level of medication in his system was insufficient to cause the hallucinatory state he claimed. Furthermore, the autopsy report detailing the extent of Lauren's injuries was presented with somber gravity. The number and nature of the wounds spoke to the brutality of the attack, while the defensive injuries bore silent testimony to Lauren's desperate fight for survival. This evidence, combined with the lack of any sign of forced entry or struggle elsewhere in the house, pointed unequivocally to Matt as the perpetrator. The defense faced the daunting task of countering the weight of evidence presented by the prosecution. They leaned on Matt's initial claim of a cough medicine-induced stupor, attempting to cast doubt on the intent behind the act. They argued for a narrative of a troubled marriage and a moment of tragic, drug-induced madness, distancing Matt from the calculated brutality suggested by the prosecution. Witness testimonies added layers of complexity to the trial. Friends and family of Lauren spoke of her vibrant personality, her dreams, and the love she had for Matt, painting a poignant picture of a life cut tragically short. In contrast, those who stood for Matt attempted to humanize him, speaking to his struggles and the love he professed for Lauren, aiming to evoke sympathy and understanding for his actions. As the trial progressed, the courtroom became a battleground for competing narratives, with the jury tasked with sifting through the evidence and testimonies to uncover the truth. The prosecution's portrayal of a premeditated murder clashed with the defense's depiction of an unintended tragedy, leaving the jury with the monumental task of determining Matt's fate. In a moment charged with tension and anticipation, the jury delivered their verdict, guilty of first-degree murder. The courtroom, a microcosm of a community seeking closure, was engulfed in a wave of mixed emotions. Relief and sorrow mingled as the reality of the verdict sank in, marking the end of one chapter and the beginning of another in the quest for justice. Matt's sentencing hearing was the final act in the legal proceedings. Confronted with the gravity of his actions, he addressed the court, expressing remorse for the irreversible harm he had inflicted on Lauren and her family. Despite his expressions of guilt, the court sentenced Matt to life in prison without the possibility of parole a decision that underscored the enormity of his crime and the value of the life he had taken. 
As the gavel fell, marking the end of the trial, the community was left to grapple with the aftermath of a tragedy that had unveiled the darkest potentials of the human heart. The quest for justice had reached its conclusion, but the echoes of Lauren's loss would linger, a somber reminder of the fragility of life and the indelible impact of our choices.